In the opening scene, we see a young woman waking up in a mysterious white cube. She has no idea where she is or how she got there. The first thing she does is plead for help, hoping that someone will hear her. However, even after several minutes of screaming, no one comes. Realizing that she is all alone, the woman decides to scan the place herself. She curiously places her hand on a wall and, to her surprise, a door magically opens. The woman excitedly walks through the door, only to find herself in another strange room, which has reverse gravity. Due to this, she is instantly pulled up, seemingly to her death. Elsewhere, we see a man named Thomas McGuire, who also finds himself inside the cube. He has a suitcase with him, which is apparently locked by a code. Thomas tries his best to open it, hoping that it can provide him with clues to escape. However, after a bit of trying, he gives up and begins mumbling. All of a sudden, Thomas hears a scream in the distance and realizes that someone has been attacked. Losing all hope of escaping alive, he then begins praying to God. In the following scene, we see a beautiful woman named Kate inside the cube. While she is investigating the place, she notices a man on the ground and rushes to check on him. The man abruptly stands up and attempts to attack her, but after a bit of questioning, he realizes that she's just as clueless as he is. The man then introduces himself as Simon and they start talking about their bizarre situation. Soon after, they notice another guy named Max in another room. He is revealed to be a famous game developer who knows a great deal about computers. While looking for him, Kate comes upon a blind girl named Sasha who is very afraid. Suddenly, another door opens, and a man in specs named Jerry enters, labeling the chamber as number four. Jerry informs Kate that he has been contemplating this for six hours and has only visited three rooms. According to him, these rooms are moving, yet no one within can feel that. How do you know, Jerry? Moments later, the group is startled by a commotion in the distance. The blind girl, Sasha, says that something is pursuing them and that they must flee immediately. However, Jerry opens a door and discovers Max trying to help Thomas, who has attempted to commit the unthinkable. Fortunately, before he can pass away, the group lowers him down. After checking his ID, Max reveals that he worked with Thomas two years ago, as they were both tasked with breaking the Pentagon mainframe. A few seconds later, another door opens and an elderly woman enters. She appears confused and claims to be looking for her gym. She introduces herself as Mrs. Paley, and it seems like she suffers from short-term memory loss. Following this, the violent guy of the group, Simon tries to pressure Thomas into providing information regarding the cube. However, the latter is unable to answer anything because of his critical condition. This causes a minor ruckus amongst the group, but they are quickly interrupted when the cube begins to move. Enraged, Simon asks Thomas once more about what is going on, and the old man finally speaks up. He says that they must figure out a code to escape the mysterious place. Max tries to open a door, but fails as he feels a wiggle on the wall. Then, all of a sudden, a wall closes in, and the room tilts to one side. They all pass through the door one by one. However, when it comes to Thomas, he handcuffs himself and swallows the key. Kate and Simon watch in horror as Thomas is smashed by the wall, while his suitcase is shredded to pieces. Later, the guy inspects, Jerry, numbers each room until they arrive at the tenth one. In a shocking turn of events, he then informs the group that he designed these door panels and touch sensors that connect one area to the next. However, he never met the actual owners as he was simply working as a freelancer. Hearing this, Kate and Simon become angry with him for not addressing it earlier. Jerry, on the other hand, claims that he did not say it before because he had signed a confidentiality agreement. He then states that he had no idea what they were working on, but he had heard a rumor about quantum teleportation. Speak English, Jerry, you nerd. Just then, Mrs. Paley notices an object and believes it to be a tesseract. Upon looking closer, Jerry confirms this and informs the others that they are in a tesseract, or hypercube. He says that a tesseract is a four-dimensional equivalent of a cube that represents a path through the boundless universe. We know, say the others, we've seen Endgame. However, he also says that it is simply a theoretical construct and is not meant to be real. Meanwhile, the group starts noticing the number 60659 everywhere they go. When Max opens the door, he notices a woman in a red dress lying on the floor. When he tries to enter that room, he is dragged oppositely by reverse gravity and falls on the floor. After that, the others also follow him to that room. The woman then awakens and is surprised to find herself in such a weird place with strange people. She introduces herself as Julia, a big shot attorney. 
Following this, they each reveal their occupation and their last memory before arriving here. Jerry confesses that he is a married engineer, whose last memory before waking up here was going to bed. Kate is a psychotherapist, who is on her way home from the hospital. When it's Simon's turn, he lies that he is a management consultant when, in fact, he is a private detective. He claims that the last thing he remembers was going out for drinks. Max then reveals that he is a computer program designer and that he fell asleep before waking up here. Sasha claims that she was completing her schoolwork as usual in the kitchen. Mrs. Paley, a retired theoretical mathematician, explains that she was in the park looking for her dog before arriving here. At last, the attorney Julia reveals that she was at a party the night before. None of these people have interesting stories. Moments later, the cube begins to move again, and a watch drops out of nowhere. The strange thing is that the watch is identical to Jerry's, and it even has his name engraved on it. Later, the group goes to another room and discovers a dead man named Dr. Rosenweg, whose body is covered in equations. Max then explains that Dr. Rosenweg was the top theoretical physicist in the quantum chaos field last year, and was even nominated for the Nobel Prize. They see several equations and formulas scribbled on the room's walls. The group notices the number 60659 once again, and this time, Kate writes it down on her hands. Meanwhile, Mrs. Paley gets confused in her memory and claims to be seeking seeking her dog, Izon. Izon is an international weapons manufacturer where she used to work as a mathematician. The group realizes they are somehow linked to Izon because they have all worked with or against him at some point. Mrs. Paley then begins babbling about how she doesn't care what Alex Trusk thinks and that she doesn't want to be a part of this nonsense. When Jerry and Max hear this, they are taken aback because Alex Trusk is a computer legend who is known around the world. They believe that this hypercube is something that only Alex Trusk could create. Moments later, Mrs. Paley opens a door and shockingly finds another version of herself pleading for help. But before anyone can react, Simon's doppelganger finishes her off before being killed by Crystal Beams himself. Witnessing this, the group on the other side is shaken to the core. Jerry believes it is a parallel universe, while Max and Julia believe it is just an optical illusion. In the next scene, the group continues to move from one room to the next. When Kate inquires about Alex Trask, Max reveals that he is the person who programmed the virus that destroyed the Tokyo Stock Exchange two years ago, as well as the one who broke into the air traffic control system. However, Jerry argues that there is no such person, and that it is all a hoax spread by conspiracy theorists. Later, when the group is asleep, Simon approaches Jerry and confesses that he is not a management consultant, but a private detective. He claims that he was in charge of finding a missing Ejon employee named Becky, see? Simon believes that this is the reason why he is locked here. Just then, Sasha who has acute hearing, hears a noise and awakens everyone. The group then observes a hovering square in the center of the room. It goes through several tesseract forms, before becoming a lethal and quickly spinning frame. Terrified, the group rushes to the other room, but Jerry does not make it on time. He is drawn into the tesseract and dissolved by the blades that shred him down to the atomic level. Dork salad coming up. Meanwhile, Kate stays around to help the blind girl Sasha, who is still stuck in the room. They nearly escape death, by gathering in one of the room's corners where the Tesseract cannot reach them. But after a while, it shrinks in size and attempts to track them down. Just when it seems that the two ladies are going to get killed, Kate realizes that the Tesseract only reacts to their movement. So, she and Sasha remain motionless. The plan works, and when the Tesseract doesn't find anyone around, it conforms back to a cube and vanishes. Sasha and Kate are relieved to have escaped death, but they are now separated from the rest of the group. Elsewhere, Simon starts to suspect that Mrs. Paley is an undercover spy of Izon. Therefore, he ties her up and begins terrorizing her, but she appears to have no understanding of what is going on. She constantly switches back and forth between her memories and begins talking about her dog and other family members. Seeing this, Max and Julia believe she is innocent and try to stop Simon, but he threatens them as well with his knife. All of a sudden, some crystal beams begin to grow from the wall. Simon quickly unties Mrs. Paley to save her, but instead of running away, she grabs onto him. The old woman says that she doesn't care if she is dying. She just wants to take another life with her. Hearing this, a scared Simon finishes her off. You crazy old bat. Meanwhile, Max and Julia move from room to room. In one of them, Max moves slower than time, while Julia moves too rapidly. He then informs her that these are variable time speed rooms. Thank you, genius Max. Later, Simon encounters Jerry from a parallel dimension. Surprisingly, it turns out this Jerry has just woken up, and he has no idea where he is. At this point, Simon has become mad because of hunger. 
So he kills Jerry from the parallel universe and takes his watch. Sometime later, Simon eventually comes across Becky, whom he was supposed to find. He informs Becky that her parents sent him to find her, and hearing this, she becomes happy. But a short while later, Simon loses control of his sanity and kills her as well. Elsewhere, Max reveals to Julia that he developed the computer game Relativity, in which players compete in a 3D environment while using several time signatures. He then says that a business called Cyber Thrill had stolen his game, and he was planning to sue them. Upon hearing this, Julia urges him to give up, claiming that he can never win because Cyber Thrill is associated with Ezon. Julia claims to know everything about Ezon because she is their attorney. Realizing that they are going to die soon, the two then kiss each other and decide to get intimate. However, they are not aware that they are in a zero-gravity, time-dilated room. As a result, they age quickly and pass away, floating in the air. Not a bad way to go, though. Meanwhile, Kate is taken aback when she discovers horrifying alternative scenarios for her own death. Sasha informs her that time and space are warped at their current location. The Tesseract will explode soon, and reality will crumble. She then reveals herself to be Alex Trusk, the hacker behind the Tesseract's development. Alex admits that when she found out Ezon was actually putting people within the Tesseract, she tried to stop it. They tried to hurt her, so she escaped into the only place they wouldn't follow. Kate is taken aback by the revelation, but she still hopes there is a way out. Just then, an insane Simon arrives in the room and threatens to kill Alex, so Kate stabs him in one eye. However, he exits the room and quickly reappears behind Alex, aged and blind in one eye. Alex starts babbling that they are all dead, which causes Simon to lose his cool and snap her neck, killing her instantly. Seeing this, a distraught Kate grabs a knife and finishes off Simon brutally. She then checks Jerry's various watch duplicates and understands that 60659 is the time when the Tesseract will explode. Oh yeah, 606 o'clock. Realizing that she doesn't have much time left, Kate snatches Alex's necklace, which contains a bunch of sensitive information about Ezon. Using this, she unlocks a panel at the bottom, exposing a dark hole. Kate then waits for a few seconds and jumps at exactly 606.59, right before the hypercube explodes. In the final scene, she awakens in the custody of Ezon officials at an unknown facility. Kate gives them the necklace, but due to their confidentiality, she is immediately shot dead. The film concludes with an Ezon official reporting that Phase 2 is terminated as the operators leave the site. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.